Hey everyone, here's another video about the great Buzzy Druton, one of my favorite drummers. And this one I'm going to be talking about his solos. He was a great soloist. Both his four bar solos and his longer solos were really fantastic. And as with his ensemble playing, he had his own way of doing it. And he took a variety of influences and put them together in a way to come up with something unique where you can hear some of his influences, but he really makes it his own. And the other element of his solos that always stood out to me was his unusual phrasing. Uh, very different from, let's say, George Wetling and Cliff Lehman, and some of the other drummers who were playing with Eddie Condon and Wild Bill Davison and other guys who Buzzy played with. Buzzy would leave space in unusual places. He would play longer phrases and he would begin and end his phrases in strange spots and in fact, the great piano player Johnny Varro told me that when he first started working with Buzzy, he really couldn't understand Buzzy's solos because they were just so strange. And Johnny told me that he really had to concentrate, and when he did, and he really listened and figured out, okay, it actually all makes sense, he realized what a brilliant soloist Buzzy is. But the first time you hear it, it is very different from a lot of these other players. So maybe I'll just try to play something in his style and then just talk about some of the uh, aspects to it that I like. phrasing uh, very different from a lot of these other players and to me I hear the influence of horn players in his solos and as I had mentioned in the other video he was friends with Charlie Parker and Miles Davis he didn't play with them a lot but he hung out with them a lot and he was closer in age to them than let's say to Eddie Condon or Wild Bill Davison or Sidney Bechet certainly so I think some of the influence of those horn players might be there in his solos. And the thing that makes it so interesting is while he has that kind of phrasing, uh, just this unusual phrasing, then he has that 4-4 four, four bass drum going on there. And I think that's why he's able to sound so good and just fit in with all the people that he played with, that he has these different influences that come together. And that bass drum is definitely an older thing that you wouldn't necessarily expect with the phrasing that he's playing on top. And I just love those things coming together. Uh, you know, it's almost like Gene Krupa bass drum with this different kind of phrasing, phrasing very unlike Gene Krupa's phrasing. But something that does remind me of Gene Krupa is how he's coming off the snare drum. He didn't play a lot of stuff around the drums. In fact, he usually just used one tom-tom. But just how he's playing everything off the snare drum and playing so many rim shots on the snare drum. He had all those rim shots and that's not really a thing that, uh, let's say, the bebop drummers did as much. That definitely reminds me of players like Gene Krupa. And in fact, when I visited Buzzy at his home, the one photo I remember he had up on the wall was of him and Gene Krupa together. And I know he loved Gene. So again, just all these different elements coming together in his solos. Another thing that reminds me of Gene Krupa is Buzzy would play single stroke triplets. Uh, he does it a couple times in that solo. And as I've mentioned before in different videos, lots of players did this. Gene Krupa did it a lot. Cozy Cole, Maury Feld. And everyone had their own way of doing it. And the way Buzzy would often do it, would play the triplets on the snare drum and then accent on the beat, hand to hand, moving around different cymbals, crashing the hi-hats, so things like this. He would do that kind of thing a lot, and um, that almost sounds a little bit like a Dave Tuff kind of thing to me, and in some of Buzzy's shorter solos, in his four-bar breaks, there's a real Dave Tuff influence, I think. Dave Tuff 
wasn't really known so much as a soloist, but he played some great four bar breaks. And for example, a recording I had mentioned in the other video, uh, Sidney Bechet at Storyville. Buzzy sounds really great on there. And on Crazy Rhythm, he plays a four bar break at the end. Buzzy plays something like this. And that to me almost sounds like if you listen to the break that Dave Tuff plays on Farewell Blues with Eddie Condon from, I think, 1946, kind of a similar thing. And even in that break, you can hear Buzzy's uh, strange phrasing. And in fact, I just played it out of context, but he starts that break on beat four. And Buzzy would do that a lot, start a four bar break on beat four, and kind of play over the bar line. And again, you get this kind of different sort of phrasing. So that reminds me a little bit of that Dave Tuff break. And another one that I like that Buzzy played on another recording I had mentioned in the previous video, Herb Hall, Old Time Modern, on Beale Street Blues on that recording, Buzzy plays a break kind of like this. And that reminds me a little bit of the break that Dave Tuff played at the end of Shimmy Shawabble with Bud Freeman and his famous Chicagoans from 1940. Um, and also, those accents, um, playing the and of three and then beat one that Buzzy will do a lot, that to me is like a real Dave Tuff kind of thing. But again, I'm not trying to say that in any way that Buzzy is just copying these Dave Tuff solos. He really makes them his own. For instance, that and of three and beat one kind of accent, Dave Tuff would usually play that on a small cymbal, not reinforced with a bass drum. And Buzzy would often play it on a rivet ride cymbal with the bass drum. So all these things, I just mean that you can hear the influence of Dave Tuff, or what I'm thinking is the influence of Dave Tuff, but Buzzy still makes it his own. And like with any great player, you can hear their influences, but they do something unique with it. So those are just some like great little short solos that Buzzy played. Um, Another just little two-bar break that he plays that I love, again, on a recording I had mentioned in the last video, Bobby Hack at the Embers, on my Monday date, Buzzy just plays this at the beginning. And I just love that, and you really have to hear the recording because it's answering a two-bar phrase that Bobby Hackett plays. You just need to really hear it just to hear how perfectly Buzzy's phrase answers Bobby Hack is and just the sound that Buzzy gets and everything. Um, oh, another thing that I just wanted to mention because I find it interesting. So a lot of drummers you'll hear play time intros, uh, you know, four bars or eight bars of time at the beginning of a tune, not a full drum solo, but just playing time as an intro. And the most common way to do that, and a great way to do that, is to play it on the hi-hat. It's a very standard way of doing that. In fact, Jake Hanna called that the standard intro, just playing time on the hi-hat. And when Buzzy would play a time intro, he would often play it on the ride cymbal. And Cliff Lehman, the same thing. They would often play these time intros on the ride cymbal. And I just bring that up because it's something you don't hear very often, but I always thought it was cool and in fact, those guys would even often play the first chorus of a tune on the ride cymbal. And George Wetling would do that as well. So would Nick Fatool. And that's one of those things, over the years, a lot of drum rules and conventions have been worked out. And one of them, which makes perfect sense, is that you start on the hi-hat and then go to the ride cymbal. So of course that works great. But it's just interesting to hear, you don't have to do it that way. You can do it the other way around. You can start on the ride cymbal and then go to the hi-hat. Just all these different ways of playing are what I love so much about this music. Even um, thinking of Buzzy Druton playing with Sidney Bechet, if you hear that Bechet at Storyville, Buzzy's playing so modern, it sounds so great with Bechet. And then if you take, let's say, another drummer, very different drummer, Zudi Singleton, who also sounds great with Sidney Bechet, so Zudi Singleton and Buzzy Druton are so different, yet they both sound great with Sidney Bechet, and Sidney Bechet sounds great with either of them. So that's the thing that I just think is so great about this music.
there's so many ways to do it. So I would definitely recommend listening to Buzzy Druton so you can really hear this. Some other recordings of his that I haven't mentioned. Uh, there's one by Peanuts Hucko, live at Eddie Condon's with a quartet. That's really great. Um, it says on it that it's George Wetling on drums and there's a George Wetling painting on the cover, but it really is Buzzy Druton, I promise you. That's a good one. And then there's one by a George Ween group, a really great band with an amazing front line of Ruby Braff, Vic Dickinson, and Pee Wee, Pee -wee Russell called uh, Midnight Concert in Paris. And that's really well recorded. You can hear Buzzy swinging at a variety of tempos. And he takes a longer solo on that. I think maybe he takes four choruses on I Found a New Baby. All right. And when he's playing a longer solo like that, you can really hear this strange phrasing that he has and really hear how you really have to follow it because he's not really marking any of the landmarks that you would usually expect when he plays a big accent. It's often not on the downbeat and he'll start these phrases in strange places. So really check that out to just hear uh, what a cool solo style he had. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope it brings some more attention to the great Buzzy Druton. He certainly deserves it. And let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything else you would like to see. And I will be back soon. Thank you.